I think it's nice to find out what life was really like for ordinary people in the past. There were a lot more of us than there were of kings and queens. Pharaoh or farmer, there is one kind of mummy no one expects to see. Babies. Everything about these tiny bundles is a mystery. Alas, we have no idea how these two baby mummies arrived at the ROM. They could have been given to us by someone. They could have been found in somebody's basement. I suspect they came back as part of a, a cabinet of curiosities. People could bring them back almost as souvenirs in the 1820s, 30s, 40s, 50s. It was the thing to do. It was fashionable. Uh, my friend bought a mummy. I'll buy a mummy as well. It was a mummy craze. At its peak, more than a century ago, collectors would display newly acquired mummies in their homes and invite friends to ghoulish unwrapping parties. Today, archaeologists and Egyptologists show more respect when probing the secrets of the ancient dead, especially the mummies of children. I think we need to care because this is a human baby. I think it's a question of human sympathy. I think it's a question of trying to understand what it is to be human. These are, these are us at another time period. Using the tools of modern forensic archaeology, Andrew and Gail hope to learn more about these children. The mummified remains of infant number one are in poor condition. Andrew suspects the tiny body was pulled apart during a grave robbery. My bet would be that that's a quick grab out of the tomb. Ah, astonishing. Infant number two appears to be in better shape. We can use the calcification of the teeth to establish the age of this individual. This one's about nine months old. But Andrew sees something else on the scan, something strange that shouldn't be there. Do you see this? This is something long and rectangular that is not bone, all right? That does not belong there. And it goes right, it's been jammed into the thoracic cavity and right up into the cranial base. 